You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir. But today we're switching over to Lee's path once again, and this is going to be a nighttime episode. I'm doing a little recording here in the evening as everyone is asleep and off in dreamland and I'm still up awake making content for you guys so this will be the tone might be a little bit different so I don't wake people up in the house but let's see I ah, you got to pick the hell place deposit <laughs> uh, okay all right so I'm going to try and be as loud but also as quiet I'm going to try and be as quietly loud as I can but anyway guys sit back and enjoy let me take you for the next 20 minutes and let's jump right in all right, alarm chain, you're up. Okay, there we go. Walking through the corridor, I can't help but want to scream. I wish I knew what was happening. If it was a hallucination, surely something would have happened to me by now. I would have walked into a wall or something. A voice echoes around, and it nearly startles me to springing, to sprinting away again. Oh, hold up. There we go. All right, not too loud. Kid? The voice is deep and firm. I can tell immediately it's Lee. Before I can really process what I'm hearing, my surroundings shift again. Oh, shee. If only for a moment, but it changed to what looked like a house. I think it was a living room. L Lee, can you hear me? I yell out with all my strength, my throat feeling hoarse from all the breathing. When no response happens, I have to hold back the growing feeling of panic welling in my chest. Who knows what might happen if I stay around here? I gotta keep moving. Before too long, I spot something in the distance. A, a door. Running up to it, there's a room number clearly written across the top. Room 004, the same room I just came from. Underneath it is smaller writing. It's rough, like it's been scratched into the metal. Come inside. There's an awful feeling in my chest, hinting that this will be a very big mistake. Calming my nerves, I pull down on the handle, slowly opening the door. The loud squeaking of the door only adds to the dread in the air. The room is dark, but there's enough light from the hallway coming in to let me see what's inside. The entire room, the entire middle of the room is missing. There's just a walkway going around the perimeter of the room. Well, the entire center isn't missing. In the very middle of the room is a platform raised higher than the rest of the room. On closer inspection, it's actually multiple platforms stacked on top of each other. They're all connected to the same support beam behind them. Looks like there's ten platforms in total in the pile. On top of the, on top of the highest platform is a horror unlike anything I've ever seen. A person stands with their arms tied behind their back. Their feet are tied together as well. I haven't seen their tail behind them. I can't even see their tail behind them. The most horrific part is that their head is what looks like a potato sack. Is what... Is what... Is that part of their... Is that over their head is what looks like a potato sack. The most horrific part is that, uh, what looks like a noose around their neck. A noose around their neck. It's a gallows. My blood turns to complete ice, and my body moves before I'm able to think. I enter the room without a moment's hesitation. Oh my god, holy fuck, are you okay? Can you hear me? The only response I get is a panicked, muffled sound. They must be gagged. The sound of gears turning begins to fill the room. I'm not sure what's happening, but I can bear up, but I can already tell it's bad. I run around the entire perimeter of the room, but there's no platform connecting directly to the center. What I do find is a folded-down platform on the back of the center support beam that must connect to the back part of the walkway when lifted. As I investigate, a loud snapping sound startles me, and I almost lose my footing. When I run back around to see where I started, I see the platform at the very bottom of the gallow has folded down. The sound of the gears start up again, and it's only now I realize that they ended when, when that snapping noise happened. It must be rigged to drop the platforms one at a time. Ah, shit. Whoever's on top of the platform is hysteric now. They're thrashing in their bindings with no avail. I'll get you down, I swear! Now that I take my focus away from the center, I notice something on the ground at the edge of the walkway in front of the door. It's a little box with a keyhole and some writing across the top. Emergency stop. Can you save them, Wallace? A sense of dread fills my chest. I have to ignore it for now, even if it is taking me to talking directly to me. This must be the way to stop the platforms from falling. It has to be. But the key isn't anywhere around here. Where the fuck is it? That awful snapping sound happens again, and I see another platform has dropped. There's only eight left. It seems one drops every minute, if I had to guess. Checking the rest of the room, there doesn't look to be any key or anything that can even contain one. It's just an empty room. Quickly, I rush out of the room and run further down the hall. I have been vehemently out on the lookout for anything out of place. Something that might be a key or contain one. Anything! The sound of the platform snapping again makes me run as fast as I can, almost tripping as I bolt down the hallway. My legs begin to burn again, but I ignore them. I feel like I've ran more today than I've ran in my entire life. Whew. 
My heart has never pumped this hard or this fast before. I'm about to lose all hope when I see something in the distance. It's another door. Almost slamming into it, I grab the door handle and yank it open. As it opens, I catch a glimpse of the plaque across the table. Across the top. Maintenance closet. There's also some small writing below it. It's another awful message directed at me. Will you let him die, Wally? Rushing into the doorframe, I'm greeted by a relieving sight. A key! It's sitting on a table near the far wall. I'm about to step inside when I register the rest of the room. It's completely floorless, save for a small section where the table sits and one long plank that connects that to the door. The plank looks to be in bad state. It's decaying and about to be completely fall apart. I wouldn't be surprised if it broke any second on its own, let alone if I'm walking on it. The length of the room is longer than my room, dorm's bedroom. But I can't just leave them to hang. I've got to save them. I need to save them. I don't have time to think this out. No matter what, I refuse to be too slow. How should I approach this? Rush through before it breaks. There you go. I can't afford to waste time. If I go slow, I might make it across more safely, but that might take too long. That person will get... No, I refuse to let that happen. I won't let that happen. With a final reassuring breath, I basically skip onto the platform. My right foot hits the wood hard, and I immediately push off it, throwing myself forward before I lose any momentum. As my right foot lifts, a cracking sound rings throughout the room. I don't have time to look back, and I just force myself across the rest of the way. The tension in the air is stronger than anything else. I swear I can hear the blood rushing in my ears. After I take another launching step, my knee almost buckles under me. Jesus, my legs are absolutely burning. I don't think about I don't think about how much I didn't think about how much I ran. And I don't think they'll collapse. The impact just caught me off guard. With my long leaps, three steps already takes me halfway. I almost lose my balance, but I manage to throw myself forward enough to, to take the final step before falling. Crashing onto the platform, I land awkwardly on my side. Fear of breaking something surges through me just like the pain. I turn on my back, testing my arm movements and around and flex my fingers. It seems everything is intact despite the pain. Lying there for several seconds, I'm forced back to reality by an echoing snap sound, snapping sound from down the hall. Shit! The thrill of walking this wooden tightrope has made me completely forget what I was doing in this, what I was doing here in the first place. My heart was throbbing in my ears in the entire run across. I don't know how many I missed. Grabbing the key, I don't even bother to look at it as I shove it in my shirt pocket. Looking back at the plank, I see the source of that cracking noise from earlier. Near the end of the door, near the end by the door, a long stride away from it, there's a horizontal split across the wood, and it's dented down slightly. That's going to be a problem. I don't have time to think about it, though, as I force myself to take that first step back. As my foot hits the plank again, it slips and I force to slam my hand down on the wood and stop myself from falling. I didn't realize how slippery this was. I'm worried I might have doomed myself with that crash, but it only caused the entire plank to bend downwards more. That's still a terrifying sight, though. Not wanting to keep my weight on it much longer, I force myself to stand up and take another step. A few more steps later and the crack is close enough that I can no longer ignore it. The entire plank is growing and I think I can hear it splitting across the whole thing. I just need to go for it before it breaks apart. Thrusting all my momentum forward, I take a step just past the crack and throw my body forward. Moments after my foot touches the wood, the crack breaks apart, causing the entire plank and myself to drop. As I'm falling, I reach out for what I can for what I can in front of me. I'm trying to grasp anything I can get my arms on. Slowly, agonizingly, slow agonizing seconds slowly pass until I feel the bottom of the doorway slam into my stomach. I wheeze loudly but manage to throw one of my hands through to grab the side of the door frame. I'm grateful for how thin I am as I'm able to slowly pull myself up. My entire body wiggles like a worm to make some ground. After a minute of painful crawling, I'm able to hoist up the rest of my body through the door. I'm coughing loudly and I'm worried I might have broken a rib, but it doesn't feel like I caused any significant damage. It's just a dull ache. I hope that's not, the, I hope that's not just the adrenaline. It, makes, it takes me a couple attempts before I'm able to stand. My legs trembling but holding strong. Oh lord, this pace, this late. After I've been drinking so much today. Ooh. Oh lord, he's taking it out of me. Anyway, now I can get through. I've only got like 11 and something minutes to go. A little surge of panic fills me as I check my pocket. The key is still in there. Little blessings. The snapping sound echoing down the hall forces me back into top gear as I bolt down the hall again. I'm sprinting at full speed down this empty hallway on the lookout for the door to the gallows. Was it this long before? I wasn't really paying attention to how far I went when I first came down here. That painful searing sensation rises in my thighs and I know I gotta get there soon. In the distance, I can finally see the door. At first, I slow down in relief, but before remembering how urgent the situation is, I slam into the door roughly. A groan pushes through my body, and I feel some wind leave my lungs. Opening the door, I fall inside just in time to see another platform drop down. There's only four platforms left. I run over to the box, pulling the key out as I do. In my rush, I fumble the key, and it clangs across the ground. It feels like my entire world falls apart, but due to some miracle, 
The key manages to stay on the wooden walkway. Throwing my entire body down, I grab the, grab the key and hover just a few inches from the keyhole. My eyes notice something on the key and I lift it up to my face. It's writing etched into the top. If he dies, it's all your fault. Oh, your fault, Wally. It's mocking me. My teeth grit and I push it out of my mind. I have to focus on getting this person out. It takes me a few attempts before I finally push the key in and then turn it. As soon as I feel the lock clicking into place, the mechanical sounds of the gears turning dies down. The struggle and panic from whoever is strung up there, uh, up there quiets down with it. They seem to understand that it's stopping, too. There's a flooding feeling of relief surging through me. I can't believe I did it. Running across that plank almost killed me twice, but I'm glad I did it. Even though I rushed my way across the entire thing, I still only had four platforms remaining. It would have taken at least double that time to make it across if I hadn't taken if I had taken my time. With my pride dulling the ache in my body, I'm able to get back to my feet with little struggle. The sound of gear starting catches my attention. It's much quieter than the previous one. As I walk around the room, the platform behind the support beam in the center of the room rises. The moment it locks into place, I'm crossing towards the middle. This platform is thicker than the plank, and after that mess, it's hard to still feel scared. It's like I'm all out of terror. Making my way next to the hooded figure, they don't seem to be struggling much at all now. I guess he's completely out of fear too. I know I would be. Hey, I got you. You're safe now. There's not even a mutter in response, but I can hear him breathing. My attempts at undoing the knot at the back of the noose are pretty unsuccessful. Having one so close to having one so close to one is making me feel nauseous, much more so than the walk of death earlier. Giving up, I notice the sack covering their faces and actually under the noose, so I can just take it off. I'm taking the sack off. Don't freak out, okay? Again, there's no response. It's an eerie feeling again, but I shouldn't feel it. But I shouldn't let panic let myself panic. It only caused things to get much worse. I pull off the sack, and I'm met with a sight that shatters me. It's a possum. Not just any possum. It's Lee. But more than that, he's completely rotting. One of his eyes is missing, and his face is covered in dark blue welts. His entire face is swollen to an uncomfortable degree. He's smiling at me. This time it's much more sickening. And then it happens. A snapping sound. The remaining platforms all drop at the same time, and there's a moment where I'm floating in place, time no longer moving. Before I can think, my body immediately grabs onto Lee's legs, and my body lurches when my drop is stopped. There's a horrific cracking sound, and my head shoots up to see the possum's neck twisted up. Somehow, though, he's still looking at me with a disgusting grin across his face. If that wasn't enough, though, his entire body starts rapidly rotting. Before I can even make a sound, his entire fur and skin are gone. Even less time passes before it's just bone. His hollow, empty eye sockets are just staring deep into me in that final moment. I know this is truly hell. The bones in all his clothing disintegrate into dust, and I'm falling. I'm not able to make any sound. I'm not able to make any sounds. Shock has completely crippled my body. Before long, I'm completely surrounded by the darkness, falling eternally into the empty void. I'm sorry. I made it in time, but it still wasn't enough. My body jolts my muscles tighten as I spring up, barely managing to stop myself from shouting out in panic. Sitting up straight causes a surge of pain to run through my stiff neck. The world around me is slowly coming into focus, and I can't stop my heavy breathing or racing mind. Jesus, fuck, are you alright? That voice is right next to my ears, but I can barely understand it. The sound of my heartbeat is so loud it muffles any other sound I could be hearing. Something grips me tightly, and I can't move. I struggle to escape, but it's strong enough to keep me in place. The blurry world around me finally starts to come into view, and I'm able to make out my surroundings. Across from me is Oscar, looking towards me with a terrified look. It's the first time I've ever seen such an expression on him. Everything slows down a bit, at least to the point where it doesn't feel like I'm hyperventilating. The grip around both of my arms is brought back to the forefront of my mind, and I turn my head to see what's going on. It's Lee, and he's looking just as frightened as Oscar. Not scared for himself, but it's fear wrought with worry. That moment where our eyes stare into each, other's, into each other lingers, basking in awful silence. The complete lack of sound makes me finally realize that there's no movement around me at all. The entire class is focused on me. Even Lily and Lucas are staring at me in shock. Queasiness begins to fill my stomach, and, I suddenly, I, and suddenly I feel very sick. Lee doesn't say anything, and as I pull away this time, but he does let me go. His expression is still fixated on me, his eyes wide with horror. Standing up, I snatch my laptop back and rush to the exit. The bouncing motion of running gives me a sense of dizziness, but I force myself to push my way through the door. The corridor outside the room is cold and fills me with dread. It's just a normal hallway and like the more rotting, decrepit one from my nightmare. But that doesn't stop the lingering panic in my chest from pushing me to pick up the pace and I'm barely able to keep myself from running. The stairwell feels a little different now. It's just as cold as the corridor, but the air feels refreshing. 
A very slight and gentle breeze brushes against my face, and the sensation of relief that surges through me is familiar. It's like when I left home, but with a lot more frantic movement and breathing. I barely managed a few steps before needing to lean against the handrail, my breath still coming out as heavy as heaving rasps that echo in the silent stairwell. Let me, uh, call it this, and just, just, unless it's a little bit... I'm making less and less sense, but as the moment goes on, wow, I really am tired. Okay, seconds go by in near silence, and I can feel myself calming down. My breathing begins to get slower and slower until it's a barely audible pant. It's at this moment that I realize just what's been going on. What an awful, fucked-up dream. Did I really think that up? I didn't think I was that disturbed. But it was so vivid, so raw. I could feel the coldness of the key in my hand and the sound of his snapping neck is still ringing in my head. The way he hung there, like there was nothing left but cold resentment staring down at me. That empty, hollow stare. The rush of emotions, the total silence. Emotions overwhelm me and I need to sit, and I feel I need to sit down, but my legs won't move anymore. I didn't realize how tired I am, and not from the lack of sleep, not anymore. I think I'm just a bit fatigued from working myself up, or at least I hope so. Shuffling over towards the stairs, I sit down on the bottom step and pull out my phone. My thumb hovers over the message tab, but the thought that his message might there might be there is terrifying. Pushing through the hesitation, I open up my text, bracing myself for whatever I might find. But there's no weird message there. Nothing from Mark at all, just my latest text from Lily. Of course it wasn't real. Why would it why would it be? Despite the relief flowing through me, there's a lingering ache still in my chest as my eyes linger on my saved messages folder. I'm not allowed to dwell on it, though, as the silence is shattered by the sounds of someone jogging down the hall. Just a few moments later, a familiar face rounds the corner. It's Lee, and his expression is back to that stoic and composed look he tends to have. It's almost comforting to see how well he keeps himself together. You okay, kid? Huh? Are you okay? You looked really fucked up in there, and you still look like shit. I am fine. It was just a really bad nightmare. What was it about? It's just a st stupid nightmare. Don't worry about it. Lee seems un unperturbed, and he's suddenly a lot harder to read. His expression is normally neutral, but he always seems to be surprisingly easy to read, at least to some degree. But right now, he's looking at me with a face as empty as a blank canvas. The possum walks over and sits next to me, a lot closer than I was expecting. Uh, um, oh! I can't help but let out a squeak as he puts an arm around my shoulder. The physical affection is a stark contrast to his restrained personality. I, I thought you didn't like people touching you. I don't like it when others touch me. Very different. It makes sense, I think. So what was the dream about? I, I told you, it's nothing. Wallace, kid, I have a little sister. If there's one thing I can do, it's listening when something's bothering someone. Well, I was just dropped into a messed up version of this building and... Hmm... A few lingering seconds pass as I try to form the words to explain what happened. Lee squeezes me tighter against him, not in a painful way, but if, as if he's trying to envelop me in his warm security. Despite it being such a simple gesture, it helps calm me some of my nerves. I ran into something being hung from a gallows. A gallows? What's that? It's where people used to lynch criminals, you know, hang them with a noose. Oh. He doesn't add any, he doesn't add any more, but his furrowed brow and caring the look in his eyes tells me everything. I tried to help him, but I couldn't, but when I tried to help him, there's a little part of me that wants to that wants to back out here and not tell Lee what I saw at the end, but Lee's eyes are so concerned and he's watching me with such intensity, such worry, I can't just leave him hanging at the end. He turned into you. Into me? Yeah, I pulled off the hemp bag and you were hanging in the noose. I couldn't help you and then I woke up. I'm sorry, I know that's weird, but I don't know why it was you that- Kid, calm down, it's okay. You can't control what your nightmares I think what your nightmares think of. I get them a lot, often of people I care about or even just friendly acquaintances around me. His hand is now rubbing along my shoulder. The warmth is soothing and comforting. I wish we could stay here forever. Where there are no bad dreams or memories that haunt you at night. Thanks, though. My ears perk up at that and I pull away from him so I can look at his face. He's wearing that kinda of, that kind toothy smile that sparks so that sparkles so rarely that sparkles so rarely like a shooting star. For what? For trying so hard to help me. It must have been really scary to fuck you up this bad, but you still tried to help me, so thank you. It was such a silly moment, something so pure and so genuine that I can feel my eyes watering. With that overwhelming emotion, there's a single moment of clarity, where I realize he's trying to make me feel better, that he's trying to comfort me any way he could. I don't know how to respond, and thankfully I don't have to as the sound of my any footsteps suddenly rumble down the hallway. It gives me one last comforting squeeze before standing back up, whether it's to preserve his reputation or just to avoid questions, I'm not sure. 
Around the corner comes Lily and the other two members of our group. I quickly get up off the step, not wanting them to be too worried about me. I don't think it'll be too successful, but I have to try. She has a look of shock on her face when she sees us at the stairs, and her sudden stop almost causes the other two to walk into her. Oh, I didn't think you guys would be here. Are you okay? You looked really upset earlier. I'm doing much better now. Lee helped me out a lot. Lee doesn't respond, but a toothy smile does cover his face. And he's looking down at me with so much care in his eyes, I can't help but feel my heart beating a little faster. I'm glad you're doing, I'm glad you're doing better, but you probably shouldn't have head, head home right away. You're probably still rather vulnerable, and no one should be alone after a panic attack. Yeah, I, I understand. You're probably right. Are, are we going back to class? Oh, no. I talked to the professor, and he said we could leave early. I just explained that we had already decided on the topic earlier and wanted to make sure you were okay. Looks like the meeting yesterday wasn't just wasn't just for fun. That was definitely fun. We gotta do it again sometime. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. I'm gonna be heading to bed very shortly. Alright guys. I don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. Good night.